And the next step here is to make the pine stitch. And we have our straps with the neck piece laid out. And over on the left side is where I have the ring. So I kind of practice and pick this up and put it on my neck and make sure that this is hanging down in my back and that this is over on the left side so that it's careful. And we want to transfer the pine stitch from this template onto the cloth. And first of all, we've punched holes neatly at the uh, various places on this template. And then the template is placed right on this portion of the neck piece. And with the uh, ceramic pencil, we go through the holes that we've punched. I've already done it. And you mark where each of the holes will be. Then your template may not have fit exactly on the panel right here. Uh, if it didn't fit exactly on the panel, uh, do a visual estimate the best you can of exactly where it is. And then just simply move it to the back so that it's perfectly in the same place on the other side. And then I turn this over and then mark each of those places on the other side so that we end up then with markings on both sides so that when we go through with a needle, we can um, come out in the correct place. Now the next step in our uh, preparing to make the pine stitch was to take 100 centimeters of our contrasting thread, if we've done it in black, and we want to make this thread uh, flat and straight and strong. So what we do is we take our wax and now we wax it, and I've already done this, we wax it a number of times. Coat it with wax the best you can, three or four times through my beeswax. I draw the thread through. I've already done this, so I'm not going to uh, worry about it now so much. And then, and I've already done this step too. Then we take a piece of paper. I took a clean white piece of paper. It's not the one that I'm here showing you now. And I took the thread with the wax on it, put it in this folded piece of paper here and ironed so that the heat impregnates the thread with the wax. And I did it with a high heat, a cotton heat. And you find out that your thread comes out uh, quite straight um, and, and a little stiffer than you have been using it before. Um, then we thread the needle and then double the thread over. So we'll have a double strand of thread this time that we're going to be working with. And um, knotted at the end. Now we begin sewing by getting inside and coming up at A. So the first thing to do is to come through the back and come up at A. So the needle comes up at A. And then we're going to head off to X. So if anything, the needle comes up at what I would call three o'clock on my dot. Now that's just through the front piece. 
Now we go down at X and then we're going to, since we're going to come up at B, I'm going to anticipate coming up at B and I'm going to put the needle in um, at what would be with when I'm looking down at it, looking down at the straight down, uh, where it would end up going toward B. So for me, that's about mm, seven o'clock. Now I push it through a little bit and then I turn it on the back and see where it's coming up. As I follow the instructions on the sheet, First I came up at A, then I went down at X. Uh, it means from the backside. And now I'm coming from the backside up at B. As I do that, I do try and influence. I know that after it goes up at B, it's going to go down at X. So when I come up at B, I'm going to put it in an orientation, still in the dot, but in orientation so it can go to X. But the other important thing is to, where the threads are, maintain that they're separate and not twisted. So I put my hands within the threads uh, many times to make sure that they're apart and don't get twisted. As I pull through, I then just let the threads come parallel so that when they lie down like that, there's no twist. If they're lying on top of each other. It looks like a single thread. If not, and they're beside each other, they can be, look like they're parallel. That's the care with which you take each of these stitches. Uh, one of the reasons we're doing that thing at, particularly at X, of going in and coming out of the dot at different places, we're going to be going in and out of X a number of times, maybe four, three or four times, maybe more. So it gets a little crowded if you put them all exactly in the same place. Be careful to uh, adjust your tension so that the um, stitches are straight and uh, at the appropriate tightness. And you may have to completely stop and straighten the thread by putting your finger in the middle and taking any spin that might come within it out. To keep repeating, what you're aiming for is the lines being laying down next to each other, if not on top of each other so that there's no twists. You will finish uh, coming from the back side, coming up through A, actually the location where we began, and you only come through the back, you don't go through the whole stack of uh, material, you just come through the one piece and then tie it off on the inside where it's hidden. Here's the finished stitch on the front side. On the back side, you have the uh, same stitch. Okay, there's mine.